So my name is Andre, um, and I have many uh, co-authors on the talk. My internet has been quite spotty in case I get disconnected. Um, I posted the slides um, into Slack and I'll ask one of the co-authors to uh, finish it. So what's the uh, outline? Uh, I'll explain the background and motivation and a little bit about Fortran Lang. And then I'll talk about the current status of L4 trend. Then the main part of the talk will be uh, a demo. Hopefully everything will work. Then we'll talk about the architecture of L4 trend and future plans and conclusion. So kind of to, to start where Damien left off, uh, Fortran is an underdog. Um, as when I started uh, the L Fortran effort and Fortran Lang efforts, the reason I got um, involved is that uh, I've seen a lot of codes around me moving away from Fortran and uh, I saw the difficulty of uh, things like running on the GPUs and generally, you know, seeing these nice languages like Rust and Julia having nice packages and um, Fortran doesn't have a, did not have, I would say, a very great ecosystem of that and so on and so forth. So um, how do we, um, you know, fix that or how, how do we improve it? How do we rejuvenate that? Well, um, I think there are many, many, uh, several approaches. We should do all of them. Um, what I would like as a user, I would like to have a rich uh, standard library. I would like to have a easy to use package manager uh, and a lot of packages, easy to use and fast. Um, I would like uh, good uh, compilers, commercial and open source and interpreter like Julia. Um, I would like the compilers to be able to run the code on CPUs, GPUs and so on. Um, I would like some kind of a website uh, for Fortran where everybody can just kind of go and and go from there. Uh, I would like a welcoming and inclusive online community, large community. So uh, we started an effort called um, Fortran Lang where we uh, try to fix um, pretty much all of these uh, issues. Um, I would say there are, and there'll be, there'll be specific talks exactly on this, but I'll just kind of give you just a very brief overview. Uh, there are four pillars. There is a standard library that we are uh, trying to develop roughly in the range of SciPy. There's a package manager called FPM, Fortran Package Manager. There'll be a dedicated talk on both of these. Uh, compilers, that's where this talk comes in. Um, we want open source and commercial compilers and we want uh, a website. Um, and uh, I've got to unfold a little more, all those um, um, four pillars and there'll be talks on each of them. So I'll just kind of focus for the rest of the talk. I'll focus on the compilers. Um, I helped with pretty much all of these efforts in some most, most of 2020 and large part of 2021. It took a lot of, lot of time, but the good news is that uh, all, all the other efforts like STDLib, FPM, as well as the web page are uh, doing really well. There are a lot of contributors. I'm very, very happy about that. And so lately I've been focusing on L4 Tran only. Um, in terms of um, work, um, developing a compiler, at least in my experience, is at least 10 times more uh, difficult than FPM for myself at least. Um, we, so let's go to Fortran. So we have a logo. Um, I'm very happy about that. It's a dragon. Dragon is, for those who don't know, a lot of compiler books as well as tools like LLVM use dragon as the, um, um, I guess, uh, logo. And so we have a dragon, of course, and then you recognize the F like uh, Fortran. So what is the motivation? Uh, well, everything I would expect as a user from modern Fortran. So I would like the compiler to be able to uh, compile to binaries, of course, on every platform, as well as cross compilation. I would like it to be, besides just compiling to binaries, I would like it to be interactive like Python or Julia. I would like the best error messages like Rust. Uh, I would like automatic interoperability with other languages, translation to other languages, of course, automatic formatting, language server, um, I would like to run on GPU very well. Um, also, I would like the compiler to be usable as a library, and of course, provide to provide static analysis and provide infrastructure um, to to write all these tools. So, um, a little bit of history. Uh, I just looked up the first commit to Elfortran I've done on October 26, uh, 2017. And in Python, I wrote a prototype in Python and took about a year and a half in private, or semi-private, I should say, until our first announcement in uh, 2019. Um, 
and then from then it took another two years to release minimal viable product which we uh, released today and i'll talk about that um what is the current status so we created this page uh, status page that uh, on on the belfortran.org uh, which okay, I'll, once i do the demo i'll show you the page um it uh, it uses a script to uh, test Fortran features. You can think of it like a Fortran test suite and it runs all Fortran and checks how each feature is supported through the different stages of the compiler. So it's fully automatic, very happy about that. Um, the production version is written in C++. It uh, works interactively in, in the Jupyter notebook and it also works as a regular compiler, it compiles to binaries with uh, different various backends. LLVM is probably the most advanced and the default backend, but it also has, we also have an x86 direct machine code backend and so, and a C++ translation backend. Uh, the, the parser is now pretty much complete for Trump 2018. Um, I'm, sure, you know, I'm sure if I say complete, uh, I'm hoping somebody will find some code that does not uh, work. We tested it in all, uh, production codes I could test it on, uh, it seems to be able to parse it and also to AST. Um, and also it can format it back as for transverse code. Um, in terms of actually compiling, that's a much, much smaller uh, feature set. We are roughly, I would say on the level of Fortran 95 and not, not every feature, but if I would say the big features are at least started or, or have some kind of a limited uh, functionality and we are now expanding it. Uh, this year we had three Google Summer of Code students. We have about uh, 15 total contributors. Uh, it's about 7,000 commits so far, so it's, it's a large effort. Uh, about 12,000, uh, sorry, 1,200, 1,200 uh, merged, uh, merged requests. And today uh, we released the minimum viable product. So if you do uh, Conda install Alfortran and Jupyter, uh, you can test it out yourself. Um, it, it will automatically work in the Jupyter notebook and I can, I'll show you in a minute. Um, on, the, on the blog, we have a blog post and I'm seeing it and describing all the details. Um, we created a demo. Um, it's a Fortran code and I'll show it to you in a minute. Um, uh, as you'll see, quite a lot of features already work. Um, we have demo notebooks, and I would say we are roughly at the level of an alpha uh, version. So it's not usable for production, it's not even a beta version, but if you are willing to work around the limitations and, and, and just kind of modify the Fortran code to make sure it compiles, it, it, um, a, lot of, a lot of things can compile already. And we are looking for new users, testers, and, and contributors. I'm hoping by the end of the talk, you'll see that it's not difficult to uh, contribute to a compiler, and I would love to. Um, see more contributors. So let's go and do a the demo. Let me maybe click on this link to, so to show you the Fortran, uh, El Fortran uh, website. And uh, if you go to, I guess the blog and that's the announcement blog, you can read that. In the documentation, there is the status page I was talking about. I'll just kind of show you, um, just let's say maybe something that doesn't work, uh, let's say, um, Let's say, let, yeah, that's a good example. Let's say open, read, and write. So we have a Fortran code. Here it is. Uh, then we run it through L-Fortran and through the multiple stages. So AST, if it's green, it means AST works, so parser works. ASR means abstract semantic representation. That's the, all the semantics as an independent representation. If it's green, it works. So you can see open and read. It can do the semantics on it, but uh, LLVM doesn't work and binary, does. it doesn't compile, it doesn't run. And if it's green all the way, then it means it runs. So, you know, like some of the functions and so on, um, mostly work. Uh, and let's say um, um, if it's some of the applying it on an array that works only semantics, but not, not the rest. All right. Um, now let's go to a terminal and let's uh, play with Alfortran a little bit. So let's go to the MVP demo and I will go to the readme and try to compile it. So the readme says exactly how you can install Alfortran using Conda or you can compile from source. I already have that um, um, environment loaded. So I'll just go ahead and, and um, build it using FPM, the Fortran package manager. There'll be a talk specifically for FPM. So as you can see, it built the whole project uh, with Alfortran. 
as, as the compiler. So let me show you what's in the project. So I'll kind of clean it up a little bit and let's go to the source directory. So you can see quite a few modules. You can see ISO C binding into C and you know, all that links together, that all works. Um, just kind of, you know, let's let's look at ISO C binding. So all this, all this works. Um, the main, uh, like the, the main demo, it computes an integral of um, just kind of like a sign, you know, some kind of function. So intrinsic function, it's using Gaussian quadrature. Um, the goal to get the quadrature weights and um, um, and um, points I took from so, so one of um, codes I've written a long time ago. So it's a you know, long file. I didn't modify it at all. Well, a little bit, I guess I should say. It used to be a function. I had to return the, the, the array as an argument because there was some bug that doesn't yet work as a, as a return value of a function. But otherwise, no other modification. Everything works. Um, and then, so we saw how to compile it when I run it. So FPM tells us to, um, we have two um, executables, so I'll just run all of them. So it compiles it again because I, I, I erased all the, the binaries. So as you can see, it integrates it, uh, it's in Gaussian quadrature, gives you the answer, exact answer should be by half, it does the difference, quadrature, way, quadrature order is eight. So we get into minus 10 or whatever it, the accuracy is. And we also have a benchmark and another executable is a benchmark. Um, what we can do is, um, of course, I'm not, if I do run, um, I'm not very good with FPM yet. I'll just, I'll just run both of them at, at both times. So we can read the, um, the quadrature order from the input files. So if I change it from eight to four, let's say, and rerun it, you'll see that uh, now it read four. So all this works with L4Tron. So it's quite a, quite a lot of features. Um, then let's talk about the benchmarking. So that would be in the, the, the sign benchmark. So we to, to, to kind of show, to get, get at least some idea how fast L4Tron can compile as well as run the final code. Uh, we implemented a sign implement sign x implementation using a polynomial and some reduction. It's not very accurate, obviously, in this implementation. Actually, no, this is a no. It's not accurate for very high arguments, but that's fine. This is just for benchmarking. As you can see, I had to work around some you know some, some bugs, but this um, will compile, uh, so we can uh, use L4 Tran to compile it and um, and run it. So it will, this is without optimization. So I guess it, I guess I forgot to run it with the timer. Uh, it should take, I don't know, two seconds or something. If I run it, um, if I compile it with uh, optimizations for now, I just enable all the optimizations currently only come from LLVM. Uh, we don't do optimizations yet in l 4 itself, but we will. So I guess 1.2. And then we can try to compile it with uh, g 4 I'll load G4 Tron my environment and um, and compile it with uh, let's say old fast. Um, so you can see it takes about the same. So the executable time is about the same as L4 Tron. So this is thanks to all of the M, uh, but you know that's very encouraging. So the final you know speed is comparable. We can dig into it more. I don't have the time right now. It's actually not generate not generating FMAs. Um, both l 4 and g 4 can be forced to do it and, and so on. Uh, the blog post announcing MVP goes into more details. Um, so that so, it, so it's very, very much usable if you are willing to work around things. Uh, last thing I'll show you is the Jupyter Notebook. Um, so for that, um, all you have to do is do Jupyter Notebook and just install l 4 as the Conda package. It will automatically register. If you do new, you'll, have, you'll see this Fortran backend that you can uh, use. And then interactively, you just uh, have to, currently at least, you have to declare variables on the global scope. You can assign to them, use them, and so on. I have some demo notebooks that I prepared. Um, so we took the tutorial from Fortran Lang, which was written as a markdown, and we converted every cell into an executable. In this case, the program, it can parse it. It doesn't actually execute it. I think in the interactive mode, what we should do is actually execute the program um, directly, but we can uncomment the um, program and now it, now it actually executes it. Um, 
we find, let's say, the operate, you know, another tutorial that we just took and converted every cell into executable. Um, so it, you know, works uh, great. As you can see, it um, so it declares, let's say the angle is declared here, but it, it's running, running in memory and every cell is compiled using LLVM to machine code and execute it. Um, yeah, and so forth. So yeah, yeah, like loops work and, you know, cycle works and prints in there and so on. Uh, do concurrent works, um, but not interactively yet. So that we still have to work on. Um, well, so we have about five minutes left. I think um, I'll just kind of quickly show you um, kind of a little bit of the internals of L4 Trend. I'll show it on, on a very simple example. Um, this is just you know, very simple for Tran code. So we can, the, the first part of the compiler is to parse to AST. So you can do show AST, it will show, it will show what, it, what it sees. You can format it back. Um, that takes the AST and format it back as for Tran source code. You can modify how, how it's formatted and so on with options. Uh, the next stage of the compiler, so AST is relatively simple. It's just syntax. The next stage of the compiler is called abstract semantic representation, ASR. It's a standalone representation. As you can see, the compiler has figured out every semantics. It, uh, it, it reported every error if there was one. So if, you, if it gives you ASR back, it's a, it's a valid Fortran code. Uh, you, uh, it has a simple table. Every operation has a type. If there are some compile time evaluations like here, it, it, that get, gets done. Um, so everything is ready for a backend to take it. So, and then we have backend. So for example, the LLVM backend gives you back LLVM code. Uh, the C++ backend gives you back C++ code uh, using uh, Cocos for arrays currently. Um, and I can't remember if we, yeah, I guess those are the two main backends here. Um, well, and then if you compile it, then it, you can, I guess, choose the backend also like that. So you can compile it using LLVM or, uh, or C++ too. Don't know if it work. Yeah, yeah, it works with some you know, warning. As you can see, it's much slower because it compiles to C++ and then calls C++ compiler to compile. By default, if you don't specify the backend, it's using LLVM, and then you can, of course, uh, run it. So that's pretty much the the compiler. And as you can see, it's super simple. All it has to do is to parse it, and the parser is pretty much done. So we don't have to worry about it too much anymore. Most of the work is from ASC to ASR. Um, pretty much get all the semantics done. Yes, the the uh, the actual code uh, implementing AST to ASR conversion is a little bit messy. It's inevitable. It has to do two passes over the code, figure out a simple table, report every error, and so on. But once it's done, the result is ASR. And again, it's a beautiful representation, standalone. It doesn't matter how you get to it. As long as you get it, everything's good. And then the backend takes this ASR and do something with it. Optimizations, um, we have... Uh, they will be implemented at the ASR level as ASR to ASR transformations. We already have about 10 such transformations, such as uh, writing for loops to while loops so that the backend has an easier job a little bit. Um, we'll have eventually hundreds of such passes, including optimization passes. Um, so that's pretty much the compiler in a, a nutshell. Um, I think I'll go back to the presentation and take it. Um, Take it from there. So let's go to full screen. So this is the architecture. So it takes the source code, transforms to AST, AST to ASR. It can go both ways. So AST code can go back to source. ASR, we currently, I think, don't have it yet coming back to AST, but uh, we plan to do that. And then ASR can go um, to generate um, LLVM, uh, C++, uh, Python wrapping, as well as eventually uh, transformation, like transpiling to it. Uh, we, we plan to add Julia back in also. Um, let's see what's the next slide. So the architect, okay, so this one. For some reason, I cannot go to the next slide. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, there it is. Um, so I already talked about it. AST and ASR are standalone representations, and the ASR allows to write optimizing passes, and it's easy to write the backend, any kind of backend. And the backend, I should say, only needs to do one pass. 
So everything is figured out in the ASL locally. So you only do one pass over, over that to generate LLVM or machine code. So runtime library, uh, we decided to write the runtime library in Fortran itself. So it has three sections, uh, built-in, pure, and impure. Built-in has things like size, land, and so on that have to be implemented in the backend. The pure section has uh, pure Fortran implementation of things such as sine and cosine and stuff like that. It can only depend on built-in or pure. And then we have impure. And those uh, you can use as a C binding to interface C and, and do anything else you need, typically interfacing the, the um, system. And or calling um, you know, sine from libm. So we'll have two implementations of, um, um, of these uh, intrinsic math functions that leads us to those you know, how, how do we plan to implement those? So there are two, two we'll have to ship two versions. Uh, in debug mode, what we want to have is accuracy first, performance second version. That's the default, for example, open libm sign. It's extremely accurate, but it's not the fastest. And in the release mode, we optionally want to allow the user to switch to a performance first accuracy second function. We have, we are still working on it, but our preliminary results show that it's possible to write this in Fortran itself and optimize it to get um, close to optimal performance and accuracy uh, about 10 to minus 15 uh, relative accuracy. So very good. Um, and <clears throat> so the near term plans are to finish the Fortran 95 compilation and actually compile some of the uh, more production codes, not just uh, the app, the demo app that, that I've shown you. And then after, after we can do that, uh, the more longer term uh, goals are to, of course, compile any for 2018, uh, including fixed form. Uh, right now, our parser is free for, free for. So we have some preliminary fixed form parser, but we have to improve it uh, to be uh, more usable. Uh, we want to grow the community of developers. Uh, we want to have automatic Python and C++ wrappers, as well as transpiling to C++ other languages. We want to add other backends. Uh, Julia is the most uh, requested, I think, after C++. Um, the runtime library, we want to have it community maintained. It already is a standalone library, standalone code. Um, we can even take it out of L4Tran and maintain it separately if there is interest. And of course, all the other items from, uh, from the motivation. So that's all I have. Um, thank you for um, your time. And let me check the... Slack if there are any questions. So let's see, where do I start? There it is. So one question is, VS Code has now an integrated Jupyter extension. Do you have any idea if Alfortran could work on that environment and what would it take it so? So I haven't tried the Jupyter extension to VS Code yet, but Alfortran, as you've seen, it works with Jupyter out of the box. So the, the Alfortran binary has a Jupyter kernel in it. Um, so as, if it's just a Jupyter protocol, I would think it should just work, I assume. If it doesn't, please report it back and we'll, we'll, uh, we can fix it. How can uh, people get involved with Alfortran? What areas do you need the most help in? Excellent uh, question. So th the best way is to go to the GitLab repository and keep submitting uh, merge requests. Um, and what areas we need help with. So it depends on your interest. So many, uh, if your interest is in fast implementation of uh, intrinsic functions, for example, then you can help us with the runtime library and I can show you where, you know, you can, if you're interested, uh, talk to me and I'm happy to show you, you know, details, but it's in this runtime um, section and, you know, in the pure, for example, you can look at the trigonometric um, uh, file and then it has pure Fortran implementation. In this case, let's say the sign. We plan that's the performance first version. Uh, if you want to help us just interfacing, you know, kind of getting the runtime library working, then you can go to the impure section where we interface uh, you, um, into, um, into C using ISO C binding. So then we can call in, we can just call any, any, any C function so things can be implemented in C. If you're interested in the LLVM backend, uh, you can, you know, we would appreciate any help there. Or uh, we will have to invest a lot of good effort into good compiler error messages. So if that's what interests you, that will go into AST to ASR translation. Um, 
I'm happy to talk about it more, but I'm running a little bit out of time. How does the Fortran compare to Flang or Classic Flang in terms of design decisions, target audience? So Flang, so the new Flang, which is now called Flang, has, I think it might have began exactly the same month as uh, Fortran. We just didn't know about each other. Um, there, so you would have to ask them exactly what their goals are. My understanding, my personal subjective understanding of their goals is that uh, they want to have a production compiler as part of LLVM. Uh, so it's tied to LLVM, I assume as the only backend, MLIR slash LLVM. Um, they want to have it as an infrastructure for uh, companies and people to build up on. Uh, that's the same goal for Alpha Trump. We also want to have it as an infrastructure. The difference is uh, we want to have multiple backends and we want to really integrate well with languages. So uh, automatic wrappers, things like that. Interactivity, that's one huge big design decision that makes it kind of hard to uh, collaborate because you have to, the parser and semantics has to know about interactivity from the, from the start. Um, one thing I didn't show you, but I will show you to encourage you to contribute to l Fortran is a speed of compilation of the compiler itself. So, you know, I'll build it in front of you. It takes about uh, less than 30 seconds. So that's, that's, uh, that includes everything, including the LLVM and so on. The LLVM library is built, but this, this um, uses it. So it's very easy to contribute to l Fortran. Um, and, um, you know, and if you are interested, we would love to um, get more contributions. I guess it's even faster than Ninja. Um, and classic flank, I think that's uh, based on the PGI, all the PGI front end. And it's a little bit hard to contribute to. It's, um, if you look into the source code, it's a little bit ha hard. Um, the design is a little bit, little bit hard because the, it's based on a little bit older compiler. The new flank, I think, is much um, more nicely designed. Um, so I think. I'm happy to talk more if you are interested, but I think we're a little bit out of time. Yeah, well, thanks. Uh, we are like, uh, yeah, we are like uh, keeping uh, like a uh, good uh, timing. And also, yeah, just to say that, yeah, I like the logo with the dragon reference. It was, <laughs> reminds me of uh, when I used to study uh, computer science, the book of with the, with the dragon, the, the compilers, the famous compilers book. Uh, okay, so now it's, uh, Thanks again. I think yeah, the discussion can can continue in Slack. So now it's the 